Ultra Pedestrian. Trail Running. Ultra Running. Backpacking. Fast Packing. Through Hiking. Supported. Unsupported. Self Supported. All of the above. Blessings. This is Ross from ultrapedestrian.com. Today I'm going to be talking to you about techniques for using trekking poles. I'm a big fan of trekking poles. I've been using them since the days I was a backpacker before I even got into running. I originally started off using a single walking stick and eventually upgraded to twin poles when I realized how much of a benefit having one pole was and was able to extrapolate what an advantage it would be to have two, especially with long grinding climbs. I don't really use poles for down running. I mostly use them for climbing and a little bit on flats. I'll use them if I'm really exhausted, if I'm super deep into a really long project and want to be able to just downshift into granny gear and cruise along. I know I can always whip out my poles and do that. And I do enjoy getting my upper body involved in my movement to some degree as well. So for all of those things, trekking poles are great. And today I'm specifically going to be talking about techniques using the Black Diamond Ultra Distance Z poles. Now these techniques will, of course, apply to any type of trekking pole, but I'm a big fan of these. They weigh so little. You can stick them away in your pack. I even will tuck them in the back of my shorts if it's a runnable section, but I know I'm going to need them before too long. Uh, they're really flexible. You can just carry them in a single hand and carry one in each hand. But they're so lightweight and they're so compact that it barely feels like you're carrying anything when you're not using them. And if you're a fan of trekking poles and you know how to use them, they can be a big help on those long grinding climbs. One thing I really like about the Black Diamond Z poles is how easy they are to deploy. So you can have them folded up and be running with them. And when you need them, just flop them out extend them into place that quickly. An important aspect of using the poles is inserting your hands into the wrist straps correctly. So what you want to do is you want to come from underneath and then fold your hand over the grip and the strap. That way when you're pulling you're not having to grip constantly. Your hand can actually be relaxed in the grip and it's the downward pressure of using the pole that actually settles your hand into the strap and attaches you to it. You don't have to actually be actively engaging your grip, which of course is gonna cause fatigue and engage unnecessary muscles in your movement, burn extra calories, and gripping constantly like that can even cause carpal tunnel syndrome long-term. So obviously that's something you want to avoid. So proper wrist strap coming up from the bottom, then grabbing the grip over the strap that way your hand can be relaxed when you're using your poles. When I'm using trekking poles, I only want to use them to essentially push myself forward. A lot of the time, you'll see people kind of cruising with them and reaching out like this with their poles in front of them. And there's no benefit in that. If anything, it impedes your movement. So reaching forward with your pole is essentially the same thing as heel striking when you're running. You're hitting the ground and actually using a braking motion to try to connect with the ground. And that's not my goal when I'm using trekking poles. I want trekking poles to engage my upper body in helping me move forward. So just like good running technique is a matter of falling forward and catching yourself repeatedly, I use my poles to do that same thing. I use my poles to tip myself forward. So again, that's what I'm always going to be doing with my poles, pushing myself forward. I don't use poles for down running. I fold my poles and put them away if it's a short down run or if it's um, an undulating course and I know I'm going to be using them again. I'll hold them both in one hand and run. I'll put one in each hand. I'll fold them up and have one in each hand or have them both folded in a single hand or even tuck them away if I know it's going to be an extended period of running. But I don't use poles for down climbing. For basic pulling technique, you're going to be using the opposite pole to the corresponding opposite foot. So you'll be using right foot and left pole, and then left foot and right pole. So essentially, you'll always have two points on the ground, increasing your balance and increasing your propulsion. Again, you don't want to reach forward with your poles. You want to be tipping yourself 
forward by pushing backwards with your poles. You always want to be pushing, not reaching forward to try to pull. It's a very inefficient type of motion to try to reach forward and then pull yourself. Pushing is very easy. So that's our goal in using our poles, is to push ourselves forward so that we're essentially in a controlled fall forward using less energy to move. There are a couple of alternative pulling methods that I use either on extremely steep climbs or when I'm getting tired and I want to change up my biomechanics and engage different muscle groups in my motion. So one of them is an overhand grip where I use the poles almost more like a cane, a traditional curved cane where your weight is on top of it. I do this by shifting my palms up onto the top of the pole and I use my little finger and my ring finger to sort of stabilize it. And that way I can actually get in almost a dips type position where I'm pushing downward to move myself and using all of that upper body strength to help move myself forward. Another alternate pulling technique I'll use is double pulling, where rather than alternating one pole with each opposite foot, I'll plant both poles and take two steps and then plant them again, or plant the poles, take three steps, and then plant them again. The benefit in the three-step method is that it alternates which stride you're pulling with every time. If you're using the two-step method, then you're going to be using one side of your body with the poles and the other without. So you would either need to alternate that every so often so that you work your body evenly, or use the three-step method, which does work your muscles in an even manner. You've probably noticed I have these ribbons on one of my wrist straps, and that's because the Black Diamond Ultra Distance Z poles do come in a right and a left. Now there's no difference in the actual poles or the grips, but there's a difference in the wrist straps. The wrist straps are the thing that determine right and left, and they have an R or an L on them. But it's not always quick and easy to see that letter, so I simply put a ribbon that's easy to see on my left wrist strap and that way when I'm getting my poles out I know which one is left and which one is right and I can easily put the right pole on the right hand. For collapsing the poles there's one trick that can help you out. There's this connective material in the poles which is how they stay together and there's a set amount of slack in here which has to move enough to allow the pole to be folded. If you fold the upper section of the pole first, sometimes it won't allow enough slack to easily fold the bottom section. So what I do when I'm collapsing my poles is I always release it, slide the grip down all the way, and then I pull out the bottom section just as far as I need to, then pull out this top section. That way you can always quickly and efficiently fold up your poles and you don't get stuck in this position where they won't collapse all the way and you have to extend them again and stretch them out and get them evened out. Now when I collapse my poles, I also like to take the wrist straps and twist them around the other parts of the pole and back over the grip. And I do them opposite ends together. So one grip is one way and one grip is the other. And that way, when I form them into this little bundle, there's wrist straps holding them at either end. and it becomes one cohesive hole. So this is not going to flop around. It's easy to hold. I don't even have to grip the whole thing. I could just hold part of it if I need to, but it makes it one nice little package rather than two floppy three-sectional poles. That way I have a nice cohesive bundle that stays together. I can carry it in one hand if that hand gets tired. I can carry it in the other hand. I can just stash it down the back of my shorts if it's a short section and I can even just put it over the top into an easily accessible part of my pack and be hands-free. 
This is the Wedden Adventure brand Ultra Bag that I've been using for longer self-supported and unsupported projects, through hikes, adventure runs, fast packing, things of that sort. It came with a water bottle holder on the front pack, which I modified by just uh, taking a little bite of fabric and stitching it to make it tighter so that it'll hold my Z poles when they're in their collapse and bundled position. So if I know I've got a long flat or down runnable section, then I fold these up and put them in here and then I'm hands free and I can run and they're right here where I can quickly grab them and deploy them when I hit the next climb. And that's the ultra pedestrian method using black diamond ultra distant Z poles. So remember, sitting is lethal, go outside and move around. Thank you.